You know those shadow people that that we keep hearing about? Oh yeah, the infamous and like, uh, apparently immortal shadow people. Oh, they're they're definitely immortal, and they're they're also um, from another dimension, or maybe they're also demons and hell beasts. Both my shadow man encounters they weren't they weren't friendly. I'll say that I didn't get that vibe from them. They they didn't give you a pat on the back. No, they both chased me. I, I don't remember your second one. I remember the one you said it, you heard all the thumping and then it came running down the stairs at you and it had human teeth. Is that is that right? Yeah, with human eyes. And the other one was when I was a little kid and I woke up and I looked out the door and it was outside and I ran. I tried to charge at it and it crouched to charge at me. Oh, shit. I don't remember that story oh, yeah. at all. That We covered that on the show. We did? Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll we can. I'll tell you that again when we're done. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah, because I don't remember that one at all. the The shadow people always freak me out, though. They're they're just something unsettling about them, and and the fact that they just kind of uh, they just show up. And and the best thing about your encounter, well, the one that I remember, uh, and and I'm presuming also the one from when you were a kid, since you know th- there was a chasing incident, but that you weren't in sleep paralysis when it happened because a lot of people when they when they're in sleep paralysis they that's when they tend to experience the shadow people so it's i i the stories where the people are not sleeping and they have the experience with the shadow people those are the creepiest ones to me because like what what's what's going on what what caused them to appear did you just happen upon them are they are they always hanging around and they just, you just happen to catch sight of them. What's their deal, man? Yeah. The first one I had, I was asleep and I, wo- I, I woke up. So I have an experience of one being asleep and one being wide awake in the middle of the day. So when I was young and after the first experience, uh, I felt that it was something very negative, but I didn't, I don't know if I'd even call it a shadow person, but it was a shadow, but I, I don't, I didn't uh, consider that like a, a witnessing something and the older I got, it seems like it's just another one of these shared experience things. And again, like you said, a lot of people experience them when they're half asleep. But again, there's some people who don't. And I think I now that I'm older and especially after my second encounter, I definitely consider them an entity. And I don't know if I consider it a shared experience so much more of a, a entity, you know, like Bigfoot or something like that. So like you think it's, it's a creature, on its own, like it's it's an actual like flesh and blood type of creature. I don't think it's flesh and blood. I think it exists more on like a ghostly plane, maybe. Mm. Would would you th- do you think it might be something related to demons, or what what people would refer to as demons? Yes, I do. Mm. Interesting. I think it's a low level that maybe even uh, a person that's changing to that side of things, a, a bad spirit that's becoming more powerful but oh. just at the very beginning levels so, so you're putting like a, a human energy behind it yeah interesting something that wants to do something bad for bad sake maybe to, for some type of gain so the the anti-santa claus <laughs> yeah something like that i don't know but each time <laughs> the one time when it ran at me and knocked me off the chair i mean it got to me and it didn't hurt me so i don't think they're on the, the physical realm yeah Maybe one of those uh, energy vampire type deals. Maybe like one of those entities that that draw off of negative emotions, negative feelings. Yeah, I caught that in that kids movie, Monsters Inc. They were just feeding off the energy of kids' fear. I was like, "Whoa, that's pretty mm-hmm. weird." We hear mm-hmm. about that. We hear about that in paranormal stuff. Yeah, yeah. That's that's I. That's why I really liked that movie a lot because of of that um that idea that they but instead of them like feeding off it they were using it to power their city 
but it's the same the same deal though right that's that the the parasitic nature of it but what if what if the shadow people happen to have uh, a group of anorexic cousins ooh are we talking about the night crawlers <laughs> <laughs> no because because the night crawlers are white and these and shadow people are not white they're they're shadow people could be a cousin from a different part of the world. You don't know. Yeah, maybe. Maybe <laughs> maybe when they, they inbreed too much, they, they turn white and just have a lower half. Yeah, become physical and walk around Yosemite. Yeah. But it's interesting that you bring that up because I, I do want to talk about them in relation to, to this phenomenon. But have, have you ever heard any reports of... The uh, the black stick man. No, but I love it already. The only thing I can correlate that to is some new ghost hunting footage capturing equipment to where the the camera has a program running through it, and it, it's I don't understand how. I know Alex from Spectral Wolf Pack Squad has used it. He has some videos. I'll try to find one and put it in the show notes so you guys can see it. But it will literally make a stick figure shape on where this entity is supposed to be based on energy readings, magnetic readings of the room. And it's weird because when it's doing it, it'll just be standing there and it's just a stick person like you're describing. But other than that, I have never heard of people actually witnessing a stick man. I'm I'm skeptical about it. And and I'll explain why after I after I kind of talk a little more about it. But it seems to have really seen a rise in attention since around 2009. But the earliest reported sighting was from 1964. Whoa. Um, but ba- basically what this is, is people report seeing uh, a, a stick figure, just a, a black stick figure that uh has no discernible facial features and to make it even weirder it appears to be two-dimensional so it it doesn't look like it's in our world it's it it literally appears to be a two-dimensional thing that just kind of shows up in our reality somehow (laughs) well it sounds like uh steven spielberg's amazing tales something movie segment (laughs) yeah like a Roger Rabbit thing, it's yeah. all flat and yeah, yeah. And and um, the the first reported sighting was in the summer of 1964, and there was a young boy named Arthur. Uh, he was he lived in New York City, and there was a wooded area right outside New York City, and he was kind of just just rolling through the woods like kids do, and he saw this thing in the distance that he could only describe as a black stick figure. And it stood what he estimated to be seven or eight feet tall. And he said around it, it looked like the air was moving. And um, the way that he described it was uh, the air was moving like the, like pavement during a hot summer day. So like that kind of like, wavy mirage effect like a hot highway pavement or something like that yep yep and he said it was all around the figure but the figure itself looked just two-dimensional and it was just standing there in the woods and it was seven feet tall yeah holy shit yeah i was hoping for like a cute fairy sprite type sized thing and no the the that's another weird thing about this figure is that when people report seeing it, it varies in size. Most often it's said to be between seven and nine feet tall, but there have been reports of it uh, being 12 feet tall, a uh, report of it being between two and three feet tall, which I'll, I'll talk about in a little bit. And then another one I'll talk about later is they estimated that it could have been 20 to 25 feet tall. Holy shit. Yeah. It's that, that one's a crazy story, but oh, even if it's a stick man, dude, something that big witnessing or seeing mm-hmm. something that big, that's scary as fuck. Yeah. Yeah. The, 
a lot of the reports show uh, when they see it, not only that it's two dimensional and it's all black and and featureless face, but they report this mirage thing around it. And and when people experience it, they often say that it seems to be a male presence for some reason. They don't have anything that indicates why it just it's a feeling they get that it's a male presence. So that's kind of weird. That is. But it's only been reported in the United States. And I actually think maybe Canada as well. So North America and Europe. It hasn't been reported anywhere else. But the earliest reported one in Europe was in 1996. And it was this, uh, again, another kid. um, He went by the name of Ryan. Uh, but he grew up on a U.S. military complex in Germany, and he there was a park nearby the the military complex where uh, him and the, the other local kids would go and and play on the playground. And um, one day he was walking home, and he for some reason felt drawn to this underground parking garage. He said sometimes the kids would use it to as like a shortcut they would cut through. And he said on this day, he just kind of had the feeling like he should go down there. And so he went down there. And as he was walking, it's underground, so you're not getting any natural light. It's it's all like those, you know, parking garage overhead lights. He's walking through the parking garage to the other side, to the other entrance to the parking garage. And he said, as he was approaching the the other entrance, or in this case, it would be the exit for him, um, he saw this stick figure that was standing on the stairway. And he said one hand was outstretched like it was holding the railing, and it just stood there. And he got the feeling that it was looking at him, even though it wasn't facing him directly. But it was just standing there with its hand on the railing, looking at him. And again, he reported seeing the mirage thing around the figure. And he got this overwhelming sense of fear. Like we, we've talked about that before with the, the, you just get that sense of fear. And it's, it's something that's reported a lot with, with paranormal encounters. And I think it has to do with energy that's being given off by the beings. I don't think it's um, like any special power they have. I think it's just, our body's way of, of reacting to something that is completely foreign and completely alien to us. Yeah. And I don't think it's so weird. I mean, that can be attributed to fucking caveman days, not wanting to be eaten by fucking mm-hmm. dinosaurs and shit. Yeah. Yeah. But he got this overwhelming sense of fear, like, like, and he just got this feeling like he needed to get out of there. And as soon as he got that feeling, the being, took off and just bolted down the stairs and out the front entrance. So then he just turned around and went back the way he came and took the long way around and went home. And it it affected him so much that he didn't even want to go out and play for, for several days afterwards. Wow. And he was just so terrified. And, and he said it didn't do anything. It didn't make any noise. It didn't make a move towards him at all. I mean, in fact, it ran away from him. It ran down the stairs and, and out, but it was just such a freaky thing. And I mean, the, the, and the two things between these two is that it was kids that witnessed it, but it's, it's not just children that it affects. I just, the, the two earliest cases happened to be children that witnessed it, but you know, that, that could be more attributed to, the fact that that children seem to be more uh, perceptive of the paranormal, they're able to see things that that adults wouldn't normally see sometimes. Yeah, and with every rule, there's exceptions to that, just like there is with people mm-hmm. who are sensitive to seeing ghosts or spirits in their adulthood. Right. Yeah, but th- but usually when these things are seen, they're just kind of off in the distance, like standing there, like here I am. Or, or they seem to be observing. Like, um, there was one case where it actually appeared in someone's house on two different occasions. 
Ooh. And one time they were they were just chilling on the couch watching TV, and just from around the corner pops a fucking black stick figure, and it just stood there. And then they got up, it ran down the hall, and it was gone. But it does. They don't make any noise. They don't. They they. It's weird. They're just there. That is weird. Yeah. And and. But it's kind of like the shadow people with with shadow people, they just appear and there's nothing they they don't do anything. But but people associate the presence of shadow people with with this deep fear. Yeah, it's I think that's I don't know. I think that with the ghost stuff, there's been plenty of times where I've experienced things where I didn't get that big rush of fear. Do you think that could be attributed to it being a specific type of entity or being? It could be, or it could just be that you had so many different experiences that it you're just like, you know, whatever, this is more of the same. That's a good point. Because I, I think with with any sort of energy, you're going to get used to it. As, as the, the more that you deal with it, the, the more used to it you'll be. Mm-hmm. Maybe not. Maybe maybe it does have to do with with the type of entity you're dealing with, and maybe they do have like a weird fear power, or maybe that's like uh, uh, like their special ability to to feed, like like a mosquito can sense heat and it uses its proboscis to to draw blood. This it senses fear, and it's got a way to draw the fear out of you. I think that most entities that exist in that realm have an, a power or an ability to deaden that fear. And I think only certain ones don't. Yeah, maybe it's like uh, with baby venomous snakes. When they bite you, they just dump all their venom into you. And maybe maybe it's the, the really like low-level entities that, that give away their presence with the, with the fear. Hmm. They're, like, they're just low-level. They go, oh, I'm new here, I'm learning my powers. Sorry. Yeah. And we don't know. We're just fucking terrified. We're like, oh my god, it's a weird two-dimensional stick figure. <laughs> it is so scary. And but it's it's really it's just, it's like it's first day on the job. It's like, oh, I'm just just kind of watching, just observing. Like his his boss is probably there, but he's like high level, so we can't even detect him. And this is just fucking jobber day number one. He's following around the boss, learning the ropes. And people keep spotting. Him. God damn it! And his boss is just like bail, bail. So he just takes off down the stairs, and <laughs> out he goes. Did this thing have a solid head? Is it described as having a solid head or like a drawn yeah. stick figure? It, oh, okay, it's no, but it, it's entire body is is two dimensional, but that like the head is just a black circle, not a black sphere, but a black circle. Wow. And there's even reports of it moving too, like, like so that one ran. But there was there was a case where a couple were, was driving. Um, I can't remember where that one was was located, but they were they were driving their car, and they saw uh, this was the one that was between two and three feet tall, and it just ran at their car, and they swerved to avoid it, and they watched in the rear view, and it ran behind. It was like weaving through traffic it's just this little like two to three foot tall two-dimensional stick figure bobbing and weaving through traffic and and according to the witness there were other other drivers that noticed it because they were you know honking and swerving and whatnot oh wow i was gonna ask if 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 there were people responding to it Mm -hmm. yeah yeah and that was at night so people were seeing it in their headlights and this the the witness that told the story said that it was a two dimensional stick figure. Wow. Well, one of the the weirdest ones is the the super tall one. So this kid was was playing in his front yard, and he looks down the street and sees this this black pole, and he said he only saw it for probably five to six seconds, and he didn't realize what it was until he saw this black pole move and when he saw it move he looked up beyond where you know beyond his line of sight 
and saw that it was the leg of this giant stick figure that was 20 to 25 feet tall. Just the leg? No, the the entire figure. Oh, but what he and what he, he confused it, as being a pole was just the leg? Right. Oh, right. wow, okay. And he said it was it um stood up and walked onto the or stepped onto the roof of the house or not his house, but the house it was next to and uh just kind of walked away and he said he got the feeling like it had a it was on a mission or it had some sort of purpose behind what it was doing. Um, but he lost sight of it after a few seconds. When you hear somebody say something like that in a description, and we hear that sometimes, like it, it seems like it had a mission or it was doing something or it wasn't there by chance. Do you find that strange or do you relate to that type of uh, description? Like they're just, just trying to describe its canter and it's how it's moving. I don't know how, like if it, if it's a two dimensional being, how the fuck do you describe its movements? You know, how does it move? Is it, is it going to be like, uh, remember those old handheld video games in the eighties where it would just be like one, like they would have an animation where it would just be like one leg moves forward and then it goes back to the standing (laughs) position. One leg moves, and it just, you'd move across the screen like that, like before Game Boy even. Yeah. I remember they were called Tiger games, right? Yeah, yeah, the Tiger Games. Yep, and that's what I picture this this thing looking like as it moves. Just just one of these fucking handheld Tiger Games. One like the same image, just or same two images, just changing as it goes forward. One leg forward, yeah, one leg backwards, one leg forward. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if that's what how it moved, but in my head, that's exactly what I picture. I just picture like one of those video game characters coming to life and running around. Well, that is bizarre, and it doesn't seem to be like something that's uh, limited to the dream realm or half-awake realm if it's running down goddamn freeways. And people are, are reacting to it. I mean, that that puts a very weird and real twist on the whole story. Yeah, there, it was even apparently researched by a cryptozoologist named Mark Miller at some point, and... Um, he went looking for one in Wyoming. I guess there had been sites, uh, sightings in Wyoming. And while he was out looking for it, he actually said that he saw it. And he didn't realize they were in the woods. He didn't realize what it was uh, until it started to move. And once it moved, he was able to to, to distinguish it from the, the trees in the woods. And they tried to take a picture, but because of the fact that they were in the forest, you couldn't really make out anything that now as cool as all these stories sound, I don't buy them. And I think that it's, it's uh, another one of these creepy pastas that kind of sprung up and then got kept alive because of Reddit. Like there's, there's a subreddit called humanoid encounters and you know it's just people talking about their quote unquote encounters with humanoid beings and maybe some of them are real but i think with a lot of these threads on reddit that um it's just a way to kind of create new urban legends and new creepy pasta and the fact that this thing really came into prominence in 2009 really seems to kind of cement that. Yeah, it's perfect timing for the whole creepy pasta thing. And I, I got the same feeling. It sounds like a like it's a character from a horror game that's come out. It made me instantly think of Siren Head. Or Slender Man. Yeah, exactly. The same type of modern creepy pasta feel. Cause I mean just the Yeah. Just the idea of a stick figure. Even when you said it was two D, I kind of had to chuckle a little bit. Yeah, I, mm-hmm. I much would have preferred it being a three dimensional in the world creature and not just See to me that two dimensional makes it creepier. Because so so think about it from the other side. Just just for just for a minute. Let's let's take the other side of things and, and pretend like this could possibly be real. If it's two dimensional, that would likely mean that it's operating on a different plane of existence. And it's somehow able to come through. And because it's on a different 
a different plane of existence. Like maybe uh, it doesn't have as many dimensions as, as our plane of existence has. So when it comes through, or maybe it's got more and we're just, we can't perceive it. So what we're perceiving is this two dimensional thing with this mirage haze around it because we can't perceive all of its dimensions. Our feeble human minds can't comprehend our weak primate magnitude. eyeballs. Maybe there, maybe there's some glorious being that that if we were able to see it for what it really is, our minds would just melt. It's Nyarlathotep. Hotep. That's what it is. <laughs> I figured it out. It's literally taking the it's most this... simple form it can muster: a stick man. Yeah. It's like your mind cannot comprehend my magnificence. I will become the stick figure. <laughs> and then he, he thinks he's taking the most simple form that he can take. But really, it's, it's the most mind boggling be, because of its simplicity. <laughs> it's having the reverse effect. People are like, oh, my God, what is their stick figure? Well, it is supremely odd. It's something that. Once you notice, it definitely doesn't belong there. I mean, we got to admit to a degree. I mean, seeing Bigfoot in the woods, an animal like that belongs in the woods. You know, seeing a ghost in an abandoned hospital. Sure, I'll I'll believe it. But to see a stick figure anywhere that's in reality just doesn't belong. And that's instantly weird. And that's what makes it so unsettling. Yeah, weird as as well as scary. Just unsettling is a perfect word for it. Even Mm. though it's just a simple stick figure. Yeah. Like I, if I'm chilling in my living room watching a movie, I don't want a stick figure looming over my shoulder, especially if he wasn't invited. Like fuck off, dude. Yeah, and he's 25 feet tall. That's that doesn't help things either. Yeah. Yeah. Could you please step stopping on the houses in my neighborhood? Well, if he stepped on that one house and it caused no damage, maybe he weighs nothing. Yeah. Even still, I don't want him stepping on houses in my neighborhood. Step on houses in your own neighborhood, you son of a bitch. Spreading his ghost footprints all over town. <laughs> yeah. W- wipe your ectoplasm at the door, please. Thank you. Yeah, but I definitely I definitely smell bullshit on this one. It sounds like something new. I mean, especially if it's on Reddit. I don't I don't know anything about Reddit. I, I, I I'm not knocking Reddit at all. I just I don't know anything about it, but it just seems like that's where a lot of this stuff is born. And in these these people who try to come up with this stuff. I mean, they're awesome. They're clever. They'll come up with uh, older sightings like that and come up with stories and names and make up fake reports. I mean, shit, what they're capable of doing now, just like if you see on YouTube videos, they have these sponsors of these murder mystery boxes that they'll send you and they come with fake newspaper, newspaper articles and photographs that you need to study and police reports. Dude, that... That shit is so cool, by the way. Yeah, I, I do. Those murder mystery boxes. I want to check that out for sure. <laughs> but, I mean, it just goes to show you what the, the modern mind, you know, somebody who's, you know, back in back in the 90s, people were being brought up uh, with the internet, you know, using that every day and using that as a tool to spread new lore, new legends and new stories like that. But, I mean, it almost could have been anything else and I, I would have... Bought it just a little bit more, but the stick figure thing just, it, it's, I don't know. It sounds like it's trying to be too obscure, like an SCP or like something like Siren Head. So let's, let's stop for a minute though, because is it really any weirder than the night crawlers? I mean, let, let's be honest. The night crawlers are, are two stick legs that are, that are marching. And then there's baby stick legs that march along with it. I got to say, I just recently rewatched all the night crawler footage and I, <laughs> it looks really good. It looks like whatever's there is there. And the leg movement is weird. Yes. We've talked about that and we brought up the idea that it could be puppets. And I mean, I'll, I'll buy I don't it. think it's puppets, man. I, no one has been able to replicate it. No one. Yeah. I don't think it's puppets either, but I mean, I'll, I'll, I mean, that's the most believable thing besides it being some unknown weird creature. But those things, I mean, those are so fucking weird. That footage, man, those things are really there, whatever the hell they are. And they scare me so much. They're, I know they're just walking sticks, but 
man, are they creepy. Yeah, like we said way back in the day, what if you're walking along and one spots you and it just starts booking at it like a fucking gazelle? Oh my God, it would be, that's terrifying because you're looking at it and really what's it going to do? But oh my God, is that so creepy? It's like, it's like when, when people that are afraid of spiders have a spider that, that like runs at them. <laughs> it's coming for me. Like, it's not going to do anything, dude, unless it's like, you know, a super aggressive venomous spider. But if it's a regular spider, what's it going to do? What if that's how the night Nothing. crawlers were, dude? Thank God nobody was standing outside. One of those things were walking around. You just see it like yeah, right. clear 25 feet in like four strides. And it's like, holy shit just sprints and has murder rage yeah it's foaming at the mouth chomping does it have mouth. a mouth it's just legs Ooh, god what is it gonna do is it just gonna headbutt them to death just just do a flying jump kick and then stomp on them with its chicken legs until they're dead yeah with those crazy legs what if they just kick the shit out of you what if they have retractable claws what if they got wee little high heels on oh that's just gonna hurt yeah yeah. Potentially deadly. But more than potentially deadly. I think that I think we could say that is absolutely deadly. <laughs> with those legs. I, with those legs, yeah. I mean at the very least they're gonna take your limbs off. They'll take you right out at the knees. And once once you have no knees, then what are you gonna do against those chicken leg bastards? <laughs> <laughs> now I really want to see that footage with ZZ Top's she's got legs playing. I can't believe that hasn't been made. Oh my god. Yes, I, oh God, I wish I, I knew how to internet because that needs to be a thing. Oh, oh shit, sorry, hold on. <laughs> oh, dude, I was, my daughter was drumming on the kitchen table the other day. Mm -hmm. It was like a, two weeks ago now. Uh, and uh, I was, I started drumming with her and she's like, you're going to hurt your fingers. I was like, no way, dude, I've been doing this forever, forever. And I started banging my fingers on the table like really hard and she laughed and I did it even harder because so, she was laughing. I, I, I'm pretty sure because I have before, I'm pretty sure both my pointer fingers are broken. <laughs> uh, the, the, the best part is the, the best part is the reverse roles there. Your daughter told you to stop <laughs> and you're like, no, I'm, I'm going to be fine. And you break your fingers. And then did, did she say, I told you so? Because if she didn't, you need to go tell her to tell you, I told you so. <laughs> no, I dare not tell her, but I, I, well, I hope she listens to this and <laughs> says, I told you so like a week from now, she's going to come running. And I told you so you stupid old man, <laughs> and you're going to hang your head in shame and be like, Oh, you're right. And then she's going to say you're grounded and take away your video games. Oh, man. That's what you get when you're not listening to, to your daughter. I was air drumming later and tapped it on like a, a surface. And I, it jolted all the way down on my elbow. I was like, oh, fuck. I think I did break it. And right now I just grabbed it and tried to crack my knuckles. Like, oh, that's I think that's broken. Way to go. Yeah, I'm good. I'm going to tough it out during COVID, bro. I'm going to come <laughs> out with two permanently straight pointer fingers. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, these used to be my trigger fingers. <laughs> Till Quick in the waist. God damn you, crony. Took away my trigger fingers. Uh, so, I mean, if we are going to attribute these things being real, these stories being real, are you going down the Skinwalker route? I mean, because it's just such a bizarre story. I mean, so I'm, I'm, I want to be on record to say that this is complete and utter bullshit that, that was, was made up. But for the sake of argument, yeah, let's say it, let's throw it on Skinwalker shit. Just just crazy, random, multi-dimensional madness. Yeah, and there's there's plenty of stories of interdimensional creatures, entities that call themselves interdimensional creatures. Mm -hmm. When it comes to fucking creatures or entities that are just so weird, they have like a special place in that weird bracket of dimensional shit. Just like the yeah, sky spitter and all those things oh, that I just love make the sky sense. Spitter. Just <laughs> The weirdest shit. I love that's the stuff that makes me excited these days. Oh, like, my God. Uh, you know, I, I don't give a shit that the Air Force declassified UFOs anymore. Like, I've been doing the UFO thing since I've been 10 years old. Like, I want the weirdest shit that I can find and I want to figure out if it's real, what the fuck is going on. Because, I mean, let's be real, most of the shit probably isn't real. But if it is, what the fuck is going on? Yeah. 
I want to see footage of like a like a caged fly me or something like that. That would trip me out or oh, some the, grainy 1930s footage of skinwalkers or the something. The sky like spitter. That. Yeah, the sky spitter. They're like, yep, it's been reported it's before. Just black and white grainy footage and just, oh my God, it's evidence of the sky spitter. Just yeah. this big set of fucking Twizzler lips hocking <laughs> loogies all over people. Yeah, the weirder the better, dude. Mm-hmm. I want... I want the the seven up spot to to start appearing. Can we get some sightings of the, of of the cool spot? Like I I really hope that most of the people listening to this are over the age of thirty and got that reference. Here's hoping. Here's hoping. If you got that reference, you're my people. If you didn't get that reference, go buy a Sega Genesis. <laughs> a Sega Genesis. <laughs> <laughs> Because the Sega was the one that had the cool spot game. Yeah. Or you can Google it. It's 2020. Good for you being born in this era. I can Google it too, but I just ordered a... But but I'm old and the internet's scary. (laughs) I used to have to type JPG when I looked for photos. Back in my day, if I wanted to, to load a photograph on the internet, it took me 15 minutes. I got to take a nap in between. You couldn't make a phone call to go on the internet at the same time. Your house would burst into flames. <laughs> oh, you remember picking up the phone and just, just bro, like ah, oh. and then you get kicked offline. Mom, I was, I was in the middle of a game. Like I didn't use a phone. How about, how's this for a story? The first time I heard that, I had no idea what it was, and somebody from my dad's church called. And it was hella late and it tripped me out and I answered the phone and they, they were a goofy type or older guy and he cracked some joke. I was like, what? Who the fuck is this? And they hung up and then the phone rang again and it was that sound. And I had never heard that. And I swore to God, Satan himself had just screamed at me through the phone. Oh. <laughs> and then I hung up. It's the voice of the devil. Yeah. And I hung up and that dude called back again. He's like, hello. I was like, fuck you. Don't go here again. In your head, you're just picturing the old man from Poltergeist 2. <laughs> Leave me alone. I didn't know. I was, it was, It was. you know, you remember that sound. That was a horrifying sound. I had yeah. no idea what that was. And somehow it would make that noise even if you didn't have speakers. I don't know how that worked, but yeah. this, you could not escape the noise if you were going onto the internet back in the day. Man, all you young kids, you're lucky you didn't have to go through that. I think it was somebody sending a fax to the wrong number or something, because it was fucking... Oh, yeah, a fax will do that, too. A fax machine will definitely do that. Goddamn, we're old. Again, what, we are. what's a fax machine? Fax machines had a very... They had a slightly longer lifeline than pagers. Oh. You know, pagers were only good until cell phones became widespread <laughs> man just all these what's a pager well you see a pager would be something that someone would call then you'd have to find a payphone and call it but what's a payphone oh my god <laughs> you ever see those videos of of parents giving uh, uh this generation of kids a rotary phone and telling them to make a phone call oh yeah yeah they those videos are the best i love it so much because they have no idea. Because, I mean, think about it now with phones. It won't call the number until you hit send. Back when we were kids, you dial the number and, and instantly it's it's connecting. And with a rotary phone, if you don't know what the fuck you're doing, like you got to bring that number all the way over. <laughs> and you had a friend that had a zero in the name. You're like, God damn it. Imagine being around back in the day when you had to like pick up the phone and wait for the town's operator to pick up and be like, Hey, yeah. connect me to Jim's house. You bitch. Yeah. <laughs> when Jim's house coming up, yeah, you just, you, you pick up the phone, turn the crank. God. Good thing. We didn't like grow up in the, the good old days of the telegraph. Maybe the, the stopping of using technology like that has has deadened our senses, maybe the newer technology. That's a lot of people say that, right? G5 yeah, tower shit, you know? It's absolutely. 
I mean, just look at look at us as a race. So the more advanced we get, the worse off we are. Like I look at how dumb people are. It, like, it does it, seem weird that technology has advanced mostly in the ways to distract people. Yeah. And and make people lazy. Yeah. I mean like people don't have to do a lot of things for themselves anymore because of, of technology and apps. Like I mean, you can even buy a fucking a robot to vacuum your house and they've got the say the the equivalent for your yard now. What? Like remember watching Honey I Shrunk the Kids and seeing that remote controlled lawnmower and you're like, man, that would be the coolest thing ever. It's a reality now and it's got AI. So you wow. know, you don't even need to remote control it. You just map your yard out and away it goes. Jeez. What I think that gets what if that thing gets pissed? So yeah. Pops a wheelie and starts shredding your kids. Yeah, what are you gonna do? Nothing. It's a fucking robot lawnmower. Your SOL. Yeah. Yeah. Your your mulch, basically. Your mulch for the future robot overlords. <laughs> so when's the last reported sighting of one of these stick men things? Let me guess. Oh, they're ongoing, man. Oh, really? Go to go to go to Reddit. There's you'll find them right now. Wow. But that's where they exist. They exist on Reddit. Do you think they're this like unsung, I don't know, code to where it's okay to spread shit like that as fact as long as it's a creepy pasta or people just pass that well, shit along? I, I think that's the th- I think that's the thing. And I, I was just having this conversation with a friend of mine the other day. Um we were talking. Have you have you heard any of the reports of the uh, stairs in the woods? No. Oh, it's it's another creepy pasta. But he was like super into it, and the stories are really fucking cool. And like, if you really like picture it and and just think about being in the woods, and all of a sudden out of nowhere, there's a fucking flight of stairs that just goes up, and there's nothing there. And, they, you know, a lot of times they say that they look like brand new stairs. Uh, some Sometimes they're carpeted. Sometimes they're painted. Sometimes they're wood. Sometimes they're metal. Um, but different. Um, there's there's just all these stories online about them. And, and he was like really into it. And I, and I broke it to him like, dude, I I love the stories. So I did some research about it. They all originate from one dude. They they didn't these things never existed anywhere until this dude started a thread on Reddit. Ah. Uh. And from there it spread. So I think this is the same thing. And 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 I think most people on those message boards understand what this is. And it, it's 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 like part of the experience, because even in the the no sleep threads. And it's well known that the the no sleep threads on Reddit are all fiction. You know, people make up their experiences and and people play along because it's it's part of the entertainment. You you're getting involved in the story. Right. And you're interacting with the protagonist as the story is ongoing. So it, it makes it more interesting. And um, then other people will share you know, similar stories or experiences or whatever. And, and then you get a phenomenon that spreads and people, other people join in and it just becomes this big community and this, this ever growing story that other people are sharing in and, and, um, creating their own story protagonists and their own, their own events that happen based in the same story, you know? So it's, it, it creates like almost a tapestry for these characters or these entities that get created by one person or, or a group of people like slender man. And it just takes on a life of its own and, and develops on its own. It seems so easy to do on the internet. Like you said, people want to take part on it. And I think it is like a willingness to accept it, but spread it, you know, with, with, yeah. with a little bit of a, I mean, I, I apparently, and of course, these stories are written to be as real as possible. But I guess that's what technically makes it a creepy pasta is a story that's presented as truth. Yeah, and and there's a lot of creepy pastas that involve known cryptids or known um, things like like Goat Man and Bunny Man. 
um, chupacabra, things like that. Even Bigfoot has its own creepy pastas. But it's I, I think it's just like a new type of uh, oral tradition or or a mythology, if you know things like that. And and I think uh, with with the internet, we're able to to do that on a on a global scale where anybody can join in and and join in you know join the story and interact and and it's just it's almost like a a, a form of role playing right right i can I, uh, I totally see what you're saying i agree with that it's cool and all and but i, it just I just think made that's why these things this shit continue to spread yeah it does it really muddies the waters because then you'll have actual websites uh like like cryptid websites start including this stuff in their you know in their uh links or or start putting out articles about this stuff but i also think about um like the, the tulpas or thought forms and you get enough attention on something and then something kind of starts showing up in the real world like with all the the all the creepypastas about Slenderman, it was bound to happen that people would start witnessing Slenderman in real life. Now, are these people just crazy people or are they people that are just seeing the result of uh, collected energy being applied to this one figure? You know, like to create a tulpa, do you really need to focus? It, it Does it have to be a concerted effort or can just attention being uh being used or or being applied to it create it or cause it to form in the real world like we we talked about the um the comic book creators i don't that might have been a patreon episode i can't recall no no we did that was a regular show that was okay yeah so we we talked about um comic book creators that they they spend so much time with their with their characters or that with their story that that elements from their their work appear in their actual life and so and, and it's also happened with authors as well they will meet or maybe not meet but see their characters that they wrote in real life it'll appear to them um you know whether whether it be just like passing them on the street or you know, but generally when they when it happens they know that that person is the character like it's it's not like oh wow that guy looks a lot like like my character jim no that is your character jim yeah the the constantine story always trips me out the most yeah because he was like nope that yeah. was that was my guy that was yeah so if you're if you are going to be a writer of things creepypasta and, and share in this experience do you think it's possible that maybe you could actually witness this or that you a, a thought form could be created and, and put into the real world? I, I got to be honest with today's world. I would attribute to people just, you know, if you want to see shit, you'll see it. And maybe even mm. a heavier dose of mental illness. I mean, we all know, you know, with the Slender Man chicks stabbing their homegirl, which is terrible. But I mean, and that's something that we know was fake and created on the internet. Maybe yeah. they wanted to, right. they wanted to become his proxy, they said, but maybe if we don't know fucking Slenderman lore and speak like they do, maybe the whole thing was about making a tulpa of Slenderman. Who knows? Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe. I, the, the weird thing about that, though, is that it, two of them were on the same page about it. So two of the, they both shared this delusion if it was a delusion. Which, I mean, you can go with, with the, you know, peer pressure or, or group think or you know, any number of excuses to explain that. But I think it's interesting that both girls were on the same page that they both were going to be the proxy for Slender Man and go live in his mansion in the woods. Yeah. And that's that could just be shared mental illness, too, or just two different types of mental illness, misery loves company type of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Could Who be. knows? Guys, do not will the stickman into reality, please. None of you. No. Unless you want to make it dance for you and you can, you know, think back to your childhood when you played the tiger games. 
Yeah. Then then that's fine. But don't don't will it into existence to walk on people's houses because it's fucking rude. Or leer over their shoulders while they watch movies. Also fucking rude. Or play in traffic because that's dangerous. Yeah, summon tiny ones too, not twenty five footers. Keep that shit out of yeah. here. Yeah, do summon like a six inch one and have it do a little dance on the table. Maybe you can play some some nice thirties music. No way we gotta do like some eighties techno and have it break dance like a motherfucker. Or play some fucking hardcore and have it do pit dances. Hell yeah, just have it skank and windmill all Summon, over the place and knock over shit. Yeah, yeah, do some floor punching, throw some roundhouse kicks. Now we're talking. It'll just not pay attention and punch your cat or dog. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Moshing stick man. You can, you can summon a bunch of them and create your own little mosh pit, throw on some Nora and just let them go nuts. Thank you for listening to the Whatcast. You can find us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, iTunes, and YouTube. Enjoy the podcast? Get yourself a Whatcast t-shirt or a sticker pack. Who was that dude on that one episode? Try the links in Homie's page. All this and more can be found at www.thewhatcasters.com. Thanks again for listening and have a great week.